we're strong the segments of chest and lungs, but we'll just go on to the asthma. So asthma, how is it, um, how is it formed? Uh, basically, asthma is just where your bronchial uh, tubes um, kind of swell when you um, have the genetics traits for it and um, it's triggered by something. So your breathing tubes are swelling um, and the muscles are squeezing and you're coughing, you're wheezing and there's chest tightness, shortness of breath. Um, so there's a swelling. Um, so most of the things treat for the uh, squeezing of the tubes. It doesn't like treat the swelling. Um, and basically, you have to treat both the swelling and the squeezing of the bronchial tubes. Um, so bronchial constriction happens with um, a trigger, um, and then like the macrophages come, and you have like bronchial spasms, and you have like an asthmatic response, um, and you like have inflammation of your bronchial tubes, so you can't really like breathe. Um, basically, for children, um, see, in um, males, they actually are at a higher risk, um, I think, before adolescence, no, so before it was that the males had a higher, um, risk for asthma and um, but now the women have a higher risk for asthma I'm not exactly sure what why that is that happened in about 1990s um, so basically asthma is just like bronchial constriction constriction of your uh, regular tubes inflammation of your tubes and then hyper responsiveness um, so anybody um, like with any degree of asthma can die from it. Um, so the goal of the asthma therapy is to reduce impairment and reduce the risk. Um, so reducing risk, we don't want to um, you to lose lung function. Um, we want to prevent um, exacerbation of asthma. We want to provide optimal um, pharmacotherapy. And then impairment, we uh, want to maintain your normal activity levels and your lung functions. So I'm going to go over the um, four things that we have to do for um, asthma care education. Um, and that's like managing and monitoring um, your asthma and like assessing um, and educating for like a partnership in asthma care. Control the um, environmental factors and the um, pharmacotherapy. So I'm just going to go through it in that order. So management assessment you can do with a flow peak monitor. Um, basically that's, um, I don't know if you've ever seen them, like you uh, try to find like a range that you're supposed to hit, um, depend on your height, age, and gender, and you blow into it, like you blow a birthday candle, it's like, like that. Um, and it'll basically show up in, as a number and you have to compare it to um, your personal best, see if it matches. If it's in the 80 to 100, um, basically your asthma is pretty well controlled. You have no coughing, no wheezing. Um, you're maintaining a normal um, activity level and you're using your inhaler before your exercise. But it's only 50 to 80%, we have to put that in the yellow zone. Um, so 80 to 100 is a green so um, Basically, 50 to 80, you might be wheezing, you might be coughing, you might have a tightness in your chest. Um, you might be waking up at night um, from your asthma. And then if you have less than 50% of your peak flow, then uh, we should probably get you to the uh, emergency room. Or at least like, call your asthma um, care provider to see like what is going on. And you know you need to like stop and just like you know rest. Okay. So basically, there's also the um, asthma control test, which.
which asks the um, rule of twos. Like the rule of two is basically asking you um, in the past month how often are you awakened by your asthma? If it's more than two, that means your asthma is not controlled. And then they also ask um, in the past week how many times had you like did you have to use your rescue inhaler? And do not count the time when you um, use your inhaler before you go and exercise. Um, usually that's done like 20 to like 10 to 30 minutes before you do an exercise. Um, basically exercise will trigger anybody's asthma, um, so don't count that. Um, so basically for adults there's like five questions and if you score less than 19 that means you don't really control your asthma well. And for children, that's nine questions. Four questions answered by um, a child, like 40, 11 years old. Um, and then five questions is answered by um, the parent. Um, so basically, if it's below 19, you have to look at the medical history, you have to like exam the person, you have to assess with a peak flow monitor or like a spirometer. Um, and then you have to like plan and then like revisit them and you know follow up to see if they're following the plan. Okay, so um, basically that's asthma. Um, for the education component, you have to make sure the um, <coughs> uh, patient knows how to use their inhaler. Um, that they have to know uh, when their inhaler, like the medicine, will run out. So basically, if you um, some patients would say, you know, um, I replace my inhaler when the mist doesn't come out of the inhaler anymore. But the mist is actually made by the propellant and not the medicine itself. The medicine itself is invisible, so you really don't know how much you have left. Um, basically, in that case, you really have to get an inhaler that shows you how much is left. Um, that's kind of tricky. Um, and also you have to use it before your exercise, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, 10 to 30 minutes, um, how to use it. And also there's like an acute asthma management golden hour that's like right like an hour after you have an asthma attack, that's a golden hour. If you can like control it, you should go to your asthma care provider or an emergency room. spacers or holding devices, you have to make sure that it's not a, um, they're not made of metal because the static electricity could get into the tube and it could keep the uh, medicine from coming out. So you could just use like a, a dishwashing fluid to um, get rid of the uh, static electricity. Um, so then we also like to um, control for the environmental factors and that's either an allergen or the irritant. An allergen is just um, basically the factor that causes you to have like, they're like the triggers um, that causes like this swelling of your um, um, brachial tubes, whereas the irritant um, causes like this squeezing um, and it can lead to like an asthmatic attack. So examples of the irritants are like smoke, um, strong odors, sprays for sulfites and foods, so the four S's. Allergens are like animal dander, um, causes like your brachial tubes to like swell, which is not really good. Um, yeah. And also for like animal dander, basically it's not like the hair that's causing um, the asthma to occur. Or, um, it's actually the urine and the saliva, the proteins that are contained in it, um, and then it just gets on like the animal's hair. So, so those are the culprits. So basically, there's actually no hypoallergenic pets. Um, and then cockroaches, you also have to watch out for. Um, make sure their dead body is not lying around somewhere. And dust mites, you have to like wash your sheets every week. Your indoor mold, you have to get rid of. On and off remote, you should get rid of. 
shouldn't really go out in midday to afternoon. Um, so, yeah. So, like, what does resulfite from hairsprays? Does flower grain? Um, spray painting? Uh, rubber latex rolls? Mineral dust? They're all like. 